sorry man. It's over. Not even in a cool way. Yes, all right. Hey, thank you. Good. Thanks for coming. It's going to be awesome. All right, I think we're ready. Everybody settle down. Everyone in the back, if you want to take your seats. And I know it's reunion time for everyone when it's January. I know there's conversations that people haven't seen each other in months, but we're going to put the focus right here on stage. So if you could be quiet in the back, you'd be surprised how much noise that makes. We appreciate it. And we'll get this started in just a moment. So quiet down, everybody. It's working-ish. Welcome to your opening round press conference for Monster Energy AMA Supercross and the Super Motocross World Championship. We're your SMX insiders. I am Jason Wygant. This is Jason Thomas. Thanks everyone for being here. It is a tradition to host in the Diamond Club our top athletes in the sport and discuss our storylines on the eve of a new racing season. And we couldn't be here without the help of everyone that helps make this happen, including Monster Energy, Fly Racing, Rocky Mountain ATV MC, of course, our athletes, teams, and the manufacturers who support those teams, and our live stream audience at home are great fans for this sport, plus our broadcast partner with NBC Sports and Peacock, and everyone involved in the Super Motocross World Championship with AMA, AMA Pro Racing, Fell Motorsports, and MX Sports Pro Racing. Last year at this press conference, we talked about it being a new era for the sport, the coming together of both motocross and supercross together to create the Super Motocross World Championship. But I think, JT, when we talked about this last January, no one had seen it. No one really knew what it would be like. It ended up being a really exciting new addition to the sport and a banner year. It actually was. You know, it, we showed improvement and increase across the board, whether it was streaming or engagement. And I think for many of the riders, we all had questions how this was going to play out too, right? Going into Anaheim 1, everyone has questions about how the results will be. I think the same was for how the Super Motocross World Championship would go, and it was a huge success. Uh, so with that, we also want to give a note to our inaugural Super Motocross World Champions from last year. In the 250 class, we had Hayden Deegan. In the 450 class, we had Jet Lawrence. That's right, and we have Jet Lawrence's championship bike up here with us, along with the Monster Energy AMA Supercross Championship machine of Chase Sexton. There are so many great things to talk about in 2024, building off of that success of the first year of SMX in 2023. But to be back in Anaheim, it would not be a stretch to call this the home of Supercross. This will be the 82nd gate drop for a Supercross race in this building. That is the most of any venue in this sport. And then we'll talk about more history this year. This is the 50th anniversary of this Supercross Championship, and we'll be celebrating that a couple of weeks from now, not too far down the road in San Diego. Uh, a lot of special new venues and special events added to the Supercross schedule this year. Yeah, it's always great to go to new venues. Uh, you, like myself, have been to many of these venues many times, so to get to go to new cities is very exciting. Uh, some of the highlights, San Francisco, which we haven't been back to in a decade, which will be awesome, and then Birmingham and Philadelphia, new venues, new cities to, uh, to visit this season. Of course, we have our 11 Pro Motocross Championship races that will remain uh, the standard uh, venues that we've had, and then we will have our Super Motocross playoffs. And we're not going to give you the dates yet, that's going to wait a little bit, but we will have our Super Motocross World Championship playoff events later this year again. We have the dates. 
We will not announce the locations. So familiar locations for Promoter Cross, a couple of new additions for Supercross. We will announce the locations for the SMX playoff races at a later date, but they're three weekends in September. The dates are already available. And we want to mention in the continuing collaboration of the two series, both Supercross and Motocross, all tickets can be purchased now via Universe and their company, Ticketmaster. Pro Motocross tickets will now be sold via Ticketmaster. That's a big change and an upgrade for the convenience side for fact. So you'll buy your tickets for Supercross and Motocross and SMX in the exact same way, which is Ticketmaster. That's a big step forward for the Pro Motocross Championship. And tickets for the SMX races will go on sale later in the year when we announce those venues. And a couple other changes, again, showing that coming together of the two championships. We announced this uh, about a month ago. The point structure has changed just a little bit. We can show you this here. Traditionally, in AMA racing, it paid 25 points to win a race. About six, seven years ago, Monster Energy AMA Supercross changed the scale a little bit to 26 points for a race win. We are now going back to the 25-point scale for all series. So all wins, a main event or triple crown win in Supercross, a pro motocross moto win pays 25 points. So just a little more uniformity across the board, same structure for both series. But I think the thing that fans were most excited about last year wasn't just the rules or how much money or the prestige. It was how easy it was to find and watch these races. Yeah, when you look at how easy it is going to be to watch racing this year, you can watch on Peacock. You can watch across. Uh, there's going to be replays on CNBC. There's just so many different ways. The SMX Video Pass, if you're an international viewer. Uh, it, I don't think it's ever been this easy to watch Monster Energy Supercross or SMX. Yeah, so to give you an idea, every race streams live on Peacock, all 31 rounds all year long. Or if you're outside the U.S., as you mentioned, the Super Motocross Video Pass. We have live television coverage coming from four rounds of Supercross, including here at Anaheim 1. Also, Detroit, Philadelphia, and Salt Lake City. They will air live on either USA Network or NBC. We'll have four live NBC rounds of Pro Motocross, Thunder Valley, Redbud, Spring Creek, and Washougal. And then the SMX playoff rounds will have same day or next day encore coverage on USA Network or NBC. And I also want to mention, it's a little cheat code, CNBC airs every race Monday at 1 a.m. That's the cheat code if you're a DVR person and you just want to set it and forget it. Just set Anaheim 1, record the whole series, you'll get every race via CNBC on your DVR. Never, I don't think, has there been an easier way or time to see the races anywhere you are at any time. Uh, and with that, we want to introduce the uh, broadcast team. We'll just bring everybody up for a photo op. A lot of familiar faces, <laughs> including myself and JT, will be back. Uh, also welcome to the stage, Lee Diffie, James Stewart, Will Christian, uh, we'll not be joined by Ricky Carmichael today. He will be here tomorrow. He's not able to be with us. Uh, but we'll bring the broadcast team on up. But I really think last year people enjoyed, again, the coming together, uh, bringing James Stewart into the booth with, with Ricky Carmichael, all-time bench racing and analysis. Just an example. We'll move to the center here of how cool this is. So we'll gather the group. That is the traditional broadcast team that we've come to know, and we work alongside in these trenches every weekend. But this is so cool. We have an addition. Never before have we had this in the sport. We are going to have a simulcast Spanish language broadcast live at all 31 rounds of the Super Motocross World Championship. So we want to introduce the world to Edgar Lopez and Tommy Rios, our Spanish broadcast team. Hello, and thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to come to you in Espanol for the first time. Supercross is coming in Spanish. My name is Edgar Lopez, and I'm here with former writer Tommy Rios, and Tommy's going to break down every race for you. But, Tommy, it's a pleasure to be here with you and sharing the booth. That's right, Edgar. We're going to do it in Espanol. We're going to bring the action live for all 31 rounds via the SMX video pass uh, to all the countries, 135 countries that this streaming service offers, and we're going to bring it to all the Spanish-speaking audiences. And talking about Spanish, how about it before we leave, 
we leave you with a little bit of a, a, a little appetizer of how this is going to actually going to sound in Spanish for you. Y ya cae el partido y están en carrera tomando la primera curva. ¿Quién toma el comando, Tommy? Partiendo primero, nuestro piloto favorito. I don't want to name No, 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 no. Digas el nombre del piloto. We're not going to say the name of the pilot. But there you go. That's a little bit of a, a taste of what it's going to sound like in Spanish this season for you. Back to you guys. Round of applause. What a great addition to the sport. Edgar Lopez there, our play-by-play -play man, uh, is part of NBC's Sunday Night Football broadcast. Also has called pretty much every sport you could think of in the Olympics, so he is high-end. And Tommy Rios used to race out here, so a lot of great analysis coming your way in Spanish. When you think about the timing as well, we have, we're going to see Jorge Prado here in a little bit, Guillaume Ferris coming over. So there's such an international crowd that, of course, yes, they can watch the English broadcast, but why not have it in their native language? I think it's going to be a huge and great addition to the sport. Absolutely. And it all starts, as you know, tomorrow we will have pre-race shows at a couple of key events. I'll be hosting a pre-race show tomorrow alongside Katie Osborne. We'll also have a pre-race show at Arlington in Texas and our Salt Lake City Monster Energy AMA Supercross finale, and then pre-race shows at all three of the SMX playoff rounds as well. I think that's something fans have always asked for. Why can't we have a pre-race show just like all the other sports? Things are certainly headed in that direction. And then if you need more coverage than that during the week, JT and I host a show called SMX Insider. We'll review the previous round and preview the next round. And then our analysts, Ricky Carmichael, James Stewart, and Ryan Villapoto have some great programming as well. Yeah, it's a little bit unfair. They have 24 titles to our zero, uh, and they get to bench race and, and talk about all these great things that we've done. We imagine that we did all these great things, uh, but yes, another podcast to listen to. Think about Bubba's World podcast as well. There's a ton of great content out there during the week. Yep. And then on race day, as you folks are probably familiar with, it starts with race day live, our two and a half hour pre-show with qualifying coverage from all the Supercross rounds, and then the one hour uh, race Day Live pre-show covering qualifying in Pro Motocross. And everything lives on the SMX World Championship hub on Peacock or the SMX Video Pass if you live outside of the United States. And one more awesome new announcement to the media side of this sport. Thanks to our friends at NBC Sports, we will now air all 31 races live on audio on Sirius XM. All 31 races live, the entire broadcast, on the NBC Sports audio channel. That's channel 85 of Sirius XM, all 31 races live. So what a great way, if you're a fan, maybe driving somewhere to hear. But I also think some new fans will probably scroll across and discover things. Well, I'm just blown away at how many different ways there is to take in this race, right? Whether you're watching on your phone, you're watching on CNBC, you're watching on the SMX Video Pass, you're listening on uh, Sirius XM Radio. Uh, it's just a, a real coup for the sport to have so many different ways to absorb this content. A couple other things we want to point out. Let's get to our uh, Supercross schedule in depth and point out a couple of specialty races uh, that we have. And it starts with those triple crowns that you and I love. We'd probably vote for more of these. The riders might say, ah, that's enough, but we like it. That's okay. We're, we're here to watch, right? That's all that matters. We're here to be entertained, and the triple crowns do a great job of that. So we will be uh, in a few weeks' time. We'll be back for Anaheim 2, the first triple crown event. The next one will be in the Indianapolis round, and that will be followed up by St. Louis. Then when we move on to the East-West showdowns, get to see all of the 250 riders go head-to-head. -head. That will take place at Nashville and Salt Lake City. Military appreciation race, one of my favorites. You get to see all the creativity from the teams, the gear companies. Everybody gets to be involved. That will be at Arlington this year, so look for all the cool things that they can come up with there. And then we have our 50th anniversary race. And to think that Supercross has gone on for 50 years is pretty wild. I think this is 82 gate drops that we'll have here at Anaheim, but 50 years. Uh, and we'll celebrate that in San Diego. Looking forward to that. And then, as most fans know, there's been a great relationship with this sport and St. Jude as the chosen charity of Monster Energy Supercross. It started with our multi-time champion, Ryan Dungey, and then blossomed to the entire sport. Uh, San Francisco will mark uh, the Love Moto Stop Cancer beginning of the campaign. That's next week, round two. That's where the text to donate begins. And this is a really cool addition that will start next weekend, the kickstart for a cause, JT. Yeah, what a great thing that Ken Roxon and his progressive X-Star Suzuki team have done. They have a motorcycle that they're going to give away. And to enter, all you have to do is go by their pit setup. They will have a QR code. You uh, log in to enter. You get an entry, and then they will uh, give that motorcycle away later in the season. So thank you to that team and to Ken Roxon specifically for being a part of the Love Moto Stop Cancer. 
Yep, and any donations to win that motorcycle will uh, go to St. Jude, and the motorcycle is on display just outside here at the Club. And then the Nashville event, which is the closest to where St. Jude Hospital actually is, that will be our Love Moto Stop Cancer Race. We'll be hosting patients and their families at the event. And what's also cool is that a lot of the teams and riders have graphics on their motorcycle or gear on their bodies that are designed either in tribute to or sometimes designed by patients of St. Jude. Yeah, and you think about over the years how much good that this series and the people behind it have done, the riders, the organization here, the fans, everybody have contributed to save lives, right? And this is the best cause that we could be behind, and uh, it's just an honor to be doing it for another year. So uh, starting in Denver, then you'll have your chance to auction or get in on the auction to win the gear and the graphics and the plastic for the motorcycles from that race in Nashville. And then another addition is the first ever Rocky Mountain ATV MC golf tournament that will take place in Salt Lake City in conjunction with our Supercross finale. Uh, that's new also, and look for more details on that uh, upcoming, but that'll be on Thursday, May the 9th. And uh, one other thing we want to talk about is SMX Next, that is the new umbrella term for the series that already exists to help the amateur riders transition to pros. We call it Supercross Futures and the Moto Scouting Combines in Pro Motocross. They're all under the umbrella term of SMX Next. Our Supercross Futures races will take place at Anaheim 2 at Daytona. A lot of the amateurs are very excited for a chance to race there under the lights. Also, St. Louis and Foxboro, and the Salt Lake City round will again be the Supercross Futures AMA National Championship round. We'll have scouting moto combine events at the Redbud and Ironman Nationals, and then the SMX World Championship final will also host the SMX World All-Stars race. We did see that at the LA Coliseum last year for our finale. It's great to get those young riders out there and really get their names out and learn the ways of professional racing. So... These are all the details, things to be excited about, things you might have missed during the offseason. What we know no one missed was the bench racing and the excitement of a new year. So let's bring some guests up and get that going. Yeah, and just before we do, I want to mention, if, if you're wondering if SMX Next was working, Hayden Deegan was racing here at Supercross Futures at Anaheim 2 last year, and he went on to be the Super Motocross World Champion for the 250 class. So Watch those races. It's important. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, so let's bring up the, uh, the team managers, and we'll start with Lars Wenstrom. Uh, Yamaha's Jeremy Coker, Suzuki's Larry Brooks, Husqvarna's Nathan Ramsey, KTM's Ian Harrison, Kawasaki's Dan Fahey, and Gas Gas's Max Lee. And your names are all here on the uh, stage. Thank you, boys. So we'll, uh, we will start off with a question for Lars Lindstrom. And Lars, what an incredible 2023 you had. Uh, it had been 20 years, though, since Ricky Carmichael had won a, a Supercross championship for Honda. Now you get to see uh, the number one plate has moved to another motorcycle, but you have this juggernaut in Jet Lawrence coming up into the 450 class. So can you walk us through the emotion, uh, how great it was to win so much last year, and then, yeah, bring Jet into the 450 class? Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, 20 years was a very, very long time for us to wait to win that championship. Uh, we're very, very proud of winning that championship and uh, proud of Chase, too, for, for doing that for us. Uh, so uh, at the same time, you know, wish him the best of luck and uh, wish that, you know, it was a it was a red bike right there. But, you know, anyways, uh, Jet Lawrence and Hunter Lawrence uh, moving up to 450 Supercross uh, and Jet obviously already proving himself as, as a uh, title threat as a rookie, uh, we believe, um, is, is really, really exciting for us. And... Um, can't wait to get started. And this is where we'll open it up to the media. We do have uh, microphones, so uh, raise your hand if you have a question for our assembly of team managers. Uh, I'll ask one while we wait for, uh, you can go ahead right there. Uh, Dan Fahey of Monster Energy Kawasaki, a lot of buzz about a new motorcycle uh, that Kawasaki had raced in works form in the MXGP series in Europe with a lot of success. How is the transition? How is that bike working so far in Supercross for your riders? The transition's been great. Um, you know, obviously, you know, for us reading about it, seeing it and everything else is one thing, but getting our guys on it and getting their response is really the real answer. And uh, it was very, very positive right from day one. So we're very excited about the season cup looking forward. We have two strong guys, two guys ready to ride, and our bike is really good. Nice. Uh, Josh Bozeman here from Motocross Action. I got it. 
love all you guys up there, but I got to go to Nathan Ramsey. Uh, Nathan, you obviously uh, have a career of yourself, champion uh, and, and race winners. Now with the Rockstar Husqvarna team as team manager, you guys had a tough year last year. You guys got a lot to prove coming back with Christian Craig and Malcolm Stewart coming back from injury. What's it been like kind of rebuilding that team and now you, this is second or third year as team manager? Third. Third year. So you're kind of getting into your own as team manager with Rockstar Husky. How, uh, how's the offseason been and, and what's the mindset going into Anaheim 1? Yeah, thanks. Um, it, 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 the program itself is uh, definitely in a good spot. Uh, we got a great crew. Um, everybody that surrounds this team is all pointed in the same direction. I feel really good about everyone and confident in what we can do. Um, like you said, it was tough on our 450 program last year. Um, but the, the good thing is when Christian and Malcolm were able to get back on the bike after their injuries, um, just the commitment and the intent behind you know, their process and their push coming into this year was huge and I could see it in pretty much every lap that they did that I got to see. Spent a lot of time obviously in Florida working hard training at the Baker factory and um, those guys you know they're not, they're not missing any you know they're hitting all the details and not you know cutting any corners so um, I'm, I'm confident that they're ready to go race um, and from what I've seen uh, they look good and I think we're all happy and, and like I said pointed in the right direction. Dan Beaver, NPC Sports for Lars. Uh, how do you keep the momentum? You had such a great season last year. How do you keep that momentum going through the off season? And is there any added emphasis on the 250 riders since uh, you lost your 250 champions from last year? Yeah, I'm not sure what off season you speak of, um, <laughs> because uh, yeah, we're super busy, and I, I think we, you know, we tried to keep that momentum that we had last year. I mean, last year we had an unbelievable year for for us. Um, I, I don't think we're under any illusion that that would be really, really tough to do again. Um, but you know, when you have the, this type of momentum that other teams have had in the past, you know, you just try to to stay on that wave as long as you can, and and uh, and do the best, and and try to see if there's anything that we we did you know, really, really well last year or, or anything that we can improve um, and just try to try to repeat that. Um, so uh, that's definitely the goal. The, the 250 class, we're super excited to have, you know, to have Joe Shimoda on the team. Um, I think that bike is very proven, obviously, uh, the last couple of years and uh, trying to just improve that bike a little bit, you know, here and there is, is uh, has been our goal and I think we've achieved that. Um, and um, so we're hoping that he can keep that, you know, uh, that same momentum on, on that class and then Chance Hymas on the East. So um, I think we're in a good spot and uh, really, really excited to see him on the track. Uh, Kellen Brown with Race Tracks. This is for Jeremy Coker. Jeremy, you bring in Cooper Webb this year to be teammates with Eli Tomac. And because of that, you're going to have two guys that are kind of alpha personalities and have both won titles of recent in the Supercross class. How do you expect that dynamic to be between the two of them and, and operate as teammates this year? Yeah, I think uh, it's going to be a good thing. I think both of them have the same mentality when it comes to racing. They show up in mean business and, and that's it. So uh, they actually both respect each other really well. Um, they've raced each other really well in the past. And I think as teammates, they'll work really well together. Uh, they'll feed off each other. And uh, for me, I think it'll be quite stressful because they both can have the potential to win a lot. And uh, there's going to be one happy guy and one unhappy guy every single race. So that's just part of racing. Um, but teammate-wise, I think they're going to be great teammates. Mitch Ketcher from Racer X. Uh, this one's for Max Lee. Obviously, you have Pierce Brown coming back from the team from last year and Justin Barsh coming back as well. You have the addition of Ryder DeFrancesco. Talk a bit about, you know, we got to see him race against you guys last year. Talk a bit about he's going to be a Supercross rookie, but kind of do you see him kind of progressed a little bit from racing against him last year, and how did the offseason go for him? Yeah, the, the offseason was good for Ryder. Honestly, the whole crew, the team's been working well together. Um, everybody's just been busting their butt, and I can't say that... Uh, uh, can't say that uh, we haven't done absolutely everything we can to put our best foot forward and to come into this season swinging. Of course, we want to be fighting for podiums and race wins, but uh, as it's his rookie season, I uh, just want to build every weekend and just take it one step at a time. Michael. Michael Lindsay, Vital Max for Larry Brooks. Uh, Larry, to touch on something that Lars mentioned, 
what off season. Uh, you've won championships and raced at the highest level with a Supercross only team. And now between SMX, the return of off season money races, other series, it is run later for everybody on this podium and every rider here than ever. Uh, what are some of the challenges for you and your team basically running into the end of November, even early December this year before being able to transition to 2024? So we raced the World Supercross Series and raced all the way through Thanksgiving, and uh, it seemed to really step on any testing time that we had. So we just pretty much tried to get through that series and then do our little bit of testing that we did leading into this year. The bike didn't change, so we made some improvements on the bike, but um, yeah, it definitely, uh, the, the whole crew is pretty wasted, tired from traveling so much, but it should be a good season. We'll see what happens. We, we need to go racing and kind of see where we are. Sorry, one second, we're gonna to go to Michael Antonovich. All right, Ian Harrison, you've been at every race for years, so I know that you've seen all of the progress that Chase has made over the years from being a 250 guy that got hurt at his very first race to Supercross champion last year. What's it been like to see him come into the team and then learn a new motorcycle with you guys over these last few months? Yeah, of course, uh, getting a guy like Chase is, um, is awesome. Um, he has, he's, he's, you've seen his progression as he's come into, the, um, come into his own here the last few years. Uh, obviously, he came from a really good bike. They won last year, so it's been challenging. You know, there's some good things on your bike, some good things on their bike, but there's only two wheels that touch the ground. So if you adjust one thing here, you affect something over there. So it's, it's been, um, we've worked at it, and I think we've made progress, and now I'm ready to see my report card tomorrow night. Uh, Ryan Nitzen with Cycle News. My question's for Lars. Uh, can you talk about, obviously, Jet proved himself in the outdoors, uh, but... You have two Supercross rookies in the 450 class. Can you just talk about any challenges, if any, uh, of the offseason and then bringing that into tomorrow night? Yeah, I mean, uh, Jet Lawrence, I, I guess you can call him a rookie in the 450 Supercross, Supercross class. Um, but with the, the outdoors that he had, you know, with the, you know, how well he was, how dominant he was there, and then uh, SMX, um, and then also overseas races that we did, uh, we're, you know, we're really confident with him and, and feel like, um, even his mentality and the way that he approaches races, I think that, you know, he will possibly avoid some of those rookie mistakes that, that usually happen. Um, but we'll see. You never know. Um, 17 races is a really long season, and Supercross is really tough. Um, and then Hunter, you know, his methodical approach too, and, and, and already that the, um, you know, the, matur the maturity that he already has and shows, the, um, I think, will suit the 450 class. And, um, and he, you know, with only two weeks on the bike and when we ra raced in Paris, he was already really, really quick. Um, so now with a couple of months of testing, uh, more time on the bike, a little time, you know, off on uh, as far as races go, I think they're, they're fresh again. So um, I think we're, we're pretty confident right now that we have two solid guys. Jamie Guida, Fidel Mix. Dan Fahey, uh, my question is, with the new bike, how is uh, Jason and Adam's off-season been? How's been testing been? What have they liked? What have they not liked? Uh, the testing's been great. As I had mentioned before, um, you know, we have a lot of years on our other bike, and, uh, you know, we change a bolt, and they know. And it was great for us to get on the new bike, and they went, you know what, this bike is really, really good. Uh, we're really happy with it. Of course, like everything, there's work to be done. And our guys worked really, really hard to make the bike suitable for both of them. But to be honest, it, it, it was just normal work. It wasn't uh, a fire drill. It was just doing what we do uh, and making the bike tailor-made to each rider. And uh, I think so far, as Larry and a couple other guys have mentioned, you know, now we have to see where we're at because we feel pretty good where we're at. And uh, now we just got to wait and see. Uh, it's David Pingree with Whiskey Throttle Media. I've got a question for Max Lee. Max, you've got an interesting dynamic under your tent with uh, seasoned veteran Justin Barsha and reigning world champion Jorge Prado. How has that been? Have they worked together at all? And what are your goals for Jorge? And what have you guys, what discussions have you guys had about his first three rounds here? It's actually been uh, quite good having Jorge around. I've known him for a long time. He's a great kid, a lot of fun, high energy, just like Justin. And um, yeah, he's new to Supercross, but uh, as a past champion, 
Um, there's always a lot to learn, and, and the whole dynamic between the riders right now has been really good, really positive. They're pushing each other every day at the track, and um, they all want to win. So um, it's a very healthy environment for everyone, and expectations for him, man, I just want him to learn as much as he can these three races. Um, I think he's definitely more than capable for top tens and potentially a top five, but um, I want some heat race wins, some old shots, and uh, learn as much as he can. I'll be happy. Yanni Hovi, X Racing Magazine Finland. This is for Ian Harrison. Ian, uh, you have the defending champ in your camp right now. How has it been working with Chase? It's been it's been good. We've we've uh, been fortunate to have this in the past. Um, so that number one is is heavy, um, and it it comes with a lot of pressure. But um, it's good pressure. It's nice to have. It's nice to have someone that has a lot of speed and a potential to win. So now it's up to us to uh, to get the bike where he likes it. And like I said earlier, there are some challenges. Some things on his on his previous bike were good. Some things on our bike are good. So you try and combine them. But it's not it's not possible to have everything. But we do our best to get him in a good place. And I, I think that's where we're at. And I'm ready to see how Saturday goes. Uh, Jeremy. Coca, uh, there were rumours that the star facility was shut down for like another top rider uh, in the off season. You guys signed Cooper, kind of towards the end of last year. You've got the biggest 250 roster. You bought a facility to have everything in house. Does it speak to maybe like a new philosophy that the Star Yamaha team is is bringing to this sport? Is is there like a bigger vision that you guys are kind of working towards with like all of these things considered? Uh, I think that uh, it's something that's definitely beneficial having our facility and our race shop and everything in one location for testing wise and stuff like that. Being able to build tracks that we want to build, being able to change stuff when it needs to be changed. I think to say it's bringing a new philosophy to the sport, I think, you know, we're not the only ones. KTM has their facility and their track very close as well, maybe not on the same exact property, but um, no, I don't think it's, I think it is something really good, really beneficial to us. Um, you know, as for the first thing you said, I think that's just a rumor. We don't really ever shut our facility down for anybody. It's pretty much in the middle of nowhere. We don't really have to shut anything down. Um, so yeah, I think the, 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 ben the benefits of having our facility uh, and race shop in one location, yes, sir, is a tremendous thing for us. And let's say that that wasn't a rumor. And do you guys have the ability to just go like, you know what, we'll have three top dogs on the team if uh, if if we've got the opportunity? Like, would you say that Star, I guess, is aggressive in their approach to getting the best talent? Uh, and you know, that that is a, a philosophy that you guys have. Yeah, I think it's no secret that uh, our team owner Bobby Reagan likes to win, and that's all he wants to do is win. And um, you know, I think the one philosophy, and I don't think it's very hard to see, but if you know, if you own the whole starting gate, eventually you're going to win all the races. And <laughs> so, no, to say the potential to have three top dogs is out of the question. No, it never is out of the question. Um, I feel like I do have three top dogs on my team right now between Cooper, Justin, and Eli. I mean, I, they're all pretty darn good riders. So, um, no, it's never out of the question. Whatever, we'll do whatever it takes to uh, try to be on the top spot. Dan Hubbard, Race Day Live. Uh, Lars Lindstrom, got a question for you. In other motorsports, the Manufacturers Cup is a big deal, and we're going to talk more about it as this year goes on and dig a little deeper into it. I believe you won, Honda won the Manufacturers Cup for Supercross 2023, and I just want to ask you from your perspective and Honda's perspective what that meant to you. Yeah, I think we won 22 also, but I could be wrong on that one, but um, I don't know if that was outdoors maybe, but it... it um it means a lot. I, I'm glad that it's becoming more important um, and getting a little bit more attention because, uh, you know, that means that you're you're doing well in both uh, 250, 450, and that you're you're consistently at the front. Um, and like you said, yeah, in other motorsports, it's a it's a big deal. Um, so for us um, to be able to say that we were the manufacturer of the year is is one more thing to add to you know to our list of things to to you know, uh, advertise our motorcycle as a really, really good product. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm glad it's becoming um, more of a thing. Hey, uh, Alex Gobert, MotoOnline.com. For Ian Harrison, uh, the, the new factory edition for 2024, can you take us through the initial feedback of that bike, say, for 
for Aaron Plessinger? What's been his thoughts or, or even Chase as well in switching to this one? How's that been and uh, is it a lot different than what we saw last year? Ah, that's a good question. Uh, yes, we have, a, we have a new chassis. All the geometry of the chassis is the same. It's just the, the stiffness, the torsional stiffness of the frame. That's a little different. And um, we gave our riders the choice uh, which one they want to use. So uh, right now on our, on our side, on the KTM side, there's I'd say 75% of the riders have chosen uh, the newer ch chassis. Some of them have still stayed on the older one. So that was also uh, that also took some effort because it requires a different setup. But um, it, it was actually nice to be able to give them something that kind of suits their style a little bit. And uh, we were fortunate enough that both these frames obviously are homologated and we could try them, yeah. So it's good. All right, that's all the time we have for our team managers. So a round of applause for them. Thank you very much for your time. As we transition into our riders, I want to point something out, and this is really cool and really interesting. If you look at the number 18 machine here, you notice the difference in colors. Uh, I want to show you this. A lot of people wondered when the SMX championship was announced, would there be two number one plates on the track at the same time? There will not be. The defending champion of each series, for example, in Supercross, Chase Sexton will wear the number one. In 450 motocross, Chet Lawrence will wear the number one. But to denote the SMX champions throughout the year, I want to address the uh, screen here and bring your attention to that. The champions of SMX will run these colors. That is a uh, purplish background and the high-vis green on their numbers all year. So that will denote, in the case of Jet Lawrence and Hayden Deegan, that they are the SMX champions over the 31 rounds as well. So that's a new addition. So don't be confused when you see that on the 38 and the 18 throughout the year, or when Jet has the number one in pro motocross, he'll again have that color as well. So that's a new addition to help the fans keep track of who's champion of each series. So that's why his bike has those colors. That'll be fun, a new addition. And JT, we're gonna bring some riders on up. Uh, we know that the media wants to talk to the riders more than anything, so we have brought an absolute massive group of talent here. We will start with our defending Monster Energy AMA Supercross champion, Will Brick KTM's Chase Sexton up. And the rest of the riders to the stage now, thank you, of Yamaha, Eli Tomac, a two-time Supercross champion. Of Yamaha, two-time Supercross champion, Cooper Webb. Former Supercross champion with Kawasaki, Jason Anderson. Also of Honda, Jet Lawrence. From Suzuki, Ken Roxon. From Gas Gas, our MXGP world champion who is coming to race Supercross for the first time. A big welcome to Jorge Prado. Uh, on, now on a Honda, Dylan Ferrandes. Uh, representing Gas Gas, Justin Barsha. On a KTM, Aaron Plessinger. On a Kawasaki, Adam Ciancerullo. And representing Husqvarna, the teammates Christian Craig and Malcolm Stewart. And two rookies adding to the 450 talent pool of Honda, Hunter Lawrence, and of Yamaha, Justin Cooper. I believe that's 15 different athletes that we'll have the opportunity to talk to this afternoon. I'll start with the defending champion, uh, Chase Sexton. All right. Welcome to our athletes. I think it's the most obvious question here. You've switched teams. How has the new motorcycle, how has the offseason been, Chase? It's, uh, it's been really fun, a lot, a lot different than uh, the last couple of years, getting on a new bike, having to learn that, and also just dealing with a new team. It's uh, cool meeting new people. I was pretty familiar with most of the guys, but when you're working with them, it's a little bit different. So it's been fun, and um, yeah, it's been, like I said, a lot different, but we've been working and working, and it's, um, we're where we want to be right now. So looking forward to tomorrow. and getting our first race under our belt. We don't really know where we're at until we go racing, so it's, that's kind of the exciting part about this race. Yeah, I was gonna ask that. There's always so much pressure in Anaheim 1, but almost every rider always says, it's just one round of 17 or 31 in the case of SMX. Should we be watching in judgment of round one, or do you feel you might even need a few rounds to even know where you are? <laughs> it's kind of like I said, that it's the exciting part. You never know really where you're at, but I think for me getting on a new bike, building every weekend, um, getting better with the settings, because like I said, I've never raced this thing um, under the lights, so that's kind of a fun part, but also um, a little bit of a stressful part, too, is, is learning a new bike and also racing a different bike, and I'm, uh, I'm ready for the challenge, but yeah, trying to build, and it is the first round of a long season, so we kind of have to obviously start off solid, but not come out and uh, just put everything on the first race. We got to um, get out there and, like I said, be solid and keep building throughout the series. Jason Thomas, NBC Sports. I, I just always wanted to say that, so bear with me. Uh, this question's for Ken Roxon. Um, last year, first race on the Suzuki here, you debut 
and you just looked a little robotic, right? Everybody's watched you over the years. You have this incredible style, and, and I personally was just – I didn't see that, but you watched – Watched you progress, you got faster, incredible end to 2023. Just walk us through the differences coming in a year ago here to now and how much further you are progressed with the motorcycle. Yeah, um, last year was just, you know, it was brutal. Um, I haven't, I didn't go on the bike until I think it was beginning of December or mid-December, so we didn't really have much time at all. So um, showing up to the races and, and testing here is also tough. So I'm in a much, much different position now. Um, the work always continues. We always try to get better. And, and I did testing this year as well. And we put in a lot of hours to try and get better. And um, I just, I feel the most relaxed I've ever felt going into Anaheim. Um, I'm treating the season with, uh, with the most respect just because, you know, we have an ex extremely stacked field. And overall, mentally, physically, I'm in a much different position than I've been in the years past. So I'm, I'm honestly the most relaxed I've been. And um, I, I also know that you know, you, I feel like you can win or be on the podium one weekend and you can finish 10th in a heartbeat, you know, and uh, I'm aware of that. So um, I just feel a lot better on the bike and overall feel much, much better. And um, I think I can just start focusing on racing instead of always focusing on the bike and what we need to change and what it has to feel like. Having said that, I'm also aware that when we come to the first race, there's usually, usually you have to mess around with the bike and do some clickers and stuff. So um, nothing new, really. I'm, I'm aware of all of that, so I'm, I'm really just excited to get going again. And my off season was, if you want to call it off season, um, was really good. And, and even in the last month and a half or so that I've been at home, I've done my thing, kept it mellow, and um, just did my thing. So I haven't really been uh, paying too much attention about stuff. So and I think that's actually a, a good thing. So I'm just really relaxed and ready to go. Open it up to the media beside you, JT. Donnie Southers wrote a moto. This question's for Malcolm. Um, you came in in 2023. You came in super prepared, a lot of buzz about you, and it all unraveled, obviously, very quickly with crashes early. How much of a toll did that take on you mentally, and how are you changing your uh, mindset coming into 2024? Uh, you know, of course, for me, it's uh, it's been a whole year for me since, since I've raced. So um, going into it, just really just relaxed, you know, um, and just having fun with it, you know, again, you know, last year kind of got taken away from me, but actually, if anything, I feel like I'm more relaxed going can, into this year. Cause I feel like I'm like a little bit of that underdog. Like nobody has seen me race in over a year. So if anything, there's just nothing but a point to prove and just go out there and have fun and, and just last all the races. But, um, again, it's off season went, re went really well. Of course, you know, anytime you first get back on the bike after nine months, it's going to be a little bit of a struggle. But after that, we picked up speed pretty quick. I've been surrounded by a lot of great teammates. And it's just really good to be back up here again in front of all you guys. Um, you know, um, you don't realize how much you miss it until it's gone. Uh, AC, mate, you are writer slash media mogul these days. So I always love your takes. Coming into this season, we've got maybe the best season of all time uh, on the horizon. Some of your storylines, some of your thoughts, some of the things that you're excited for uh, as a fan of the sport, not just a rider. Well, I'm very excited about your haircut, dude. Your hair looks fantastic. Let me just say that. Thank um, you, brother. Yeah, I think uh, I feel like every year we add more and more chairs in this press conference because the, the talent and just the way the sport is headed in general, It's I think there's going to be... 17 or 18 factory guys on the gate you know so when you talk about you see uh, sports like f1 everybody factory it's kind of starting to trend that way and um, it's because there's so many talented dudes up here and um, for myself it's a great opportunity for me to to test myself um, you know against the best and um, I've had a good off season my, myself as you know we talked um, early in the off season uh, been able to do a lot more laps and feel fit and ready to go and um but yeah, there's there's a lot of storylines. I guess you'll have to wait uh, wait to see on the podcast during the week. We're gonna we're gonna try to knock those out. Jonathan McCready, get your block home for Jet Lawrence. Jet, it doesn't seem that long ago you were riding EMX 250 and winning at just 14 in Europe. Did you expect to climb through the ranks so quickly in America and at 20 years old be one of the biggest names in the sport and a, one of the biggest favorites for this title? Um, definitely not. <laughs> I can uh, I can say now, being back in Europe, I mean, it was going not too bad, but we didn't uh, think the success would come this fast. We definitely uh, thought it would be a lot longer, but um, no, definitely, definitely grateful to be 
where I am now and, and uh, worked my butt off to be, be here. And so I'm pumped to be here finally and looking forward to this season. Should be a good one for me. Excited to learn more and, and, uh, and yeah, put it up there. Dan Beaver, NBC Sports for Hunter. Uh, you're too much of a professional, I'm sure, to feel butterflies. But looking at the, the folks sitting here next to you, what are your feelings going into your first 450 Supercross race? Yeah, a lot of excitement. Uh, there's a bunch of guys I haven't raced before. I've uh, watched a lot of the guys on TVs for a lot of the years, so it's, it's awesome. You know, I'm just looking forward to it. Round one of 31, as uh, Jason said before, so long season, and uh, yeah, just happy to be here. Like uh, Malk said, you know, you miss it when it's gone, um, so yeah, we're glad it's here, and yeah, looking to have a good year. Uh, I want to ask a, one sec, I just want to ask a similar question to you, Justin Cooper. Uh, that was a different scenario. Last year, you raced a couple of 450 races in the middle of the season to kind of get away from that pressure. It was a little under the radar, because you weren't at Anaheim 1. Do you think that's going to help make it easier this year? It's almost like a half year transition that you've already had. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think there's just a lot more that I know, knowing that I, you know, what I learned last year is going to help me. Uh, I learned a lot of things in that I wouldn't get, you know, watching on TV. So I uh, was able to, you know, kind of learn the different class format and just, you know, the track conditions and all that. So it was definitely a good learning year for me last year. I had a good off season last year and this year. So um, yeah, looking to kind of build on what I learned last year and, uh, yeah, not to put too much pressure on myself, but, yeah, I want to do good. Thanks. Go ahead. Uh, Don Mayetta, Swapman Alive. This is for Eli. Um, it's been a quiet off-season, quiet recovery for you. <clears throat> the most we've seen is the uh, that Bell video, but uh, we obviously know you're super determined to come back. Where do you put yourself now coming back from the Achilles injury? as compared to where you were last year at this time? At this time, I feel like I'm in the, the same position, and that's how well it's gone for me. Um, it was a huge unknown. Uh, you know, I was on the motorcycle, I think it was somewhere around the, the middle of October was when I first got on it, and, um, and, and that's when I started. So my goal was to be on Supercross in November, and we were able to, to hit that mark. And, and since then, it's, it's been uh, pretty smooth sailing. Um, you know, this injury is, was a scary thing to, to have happen, you know, that's for sure. Um, but I think with, with our equipment and our boots and, and just the way, you know, you sit on a motorcycle, um, you know, you can, you can get through this injury, you know, within say six months and you can be back on the motorcycle per performing. Um, and I felt like I've, I'm to the level that I was, uh, uh last year, you know, say, say January. So. Um, we're ready. Kellen Brown with Race Rex. This is for Chase. A um, lot of talk about the changes for you, obviously going to a new team, but one thing that did stay the same is you kept your mechanic, Brandon Zimmerman. Can you just kind of talk about the importance that is for you to still have someone in your corner that's familiar, and as you learn a new bike, you can kind of rely on him a little bit too? Yeah, it's been cool to keep Zim. I think when you make a big change, obviously going to a new team, you don't want to have everything new. I've kept same trainer, same mechanic. Uh, my dad's still my practice bike mechanic at home. So the team, other than the motorcycle team, has been relatively the same. So that's cool to kind of have uh, some similar faces. But yeah, having Zim, he uh, had to learn just as much about the bike as I did. And uh, it's been cool learning with him. He's, we're still obviously both learning, but it's, uh, it's been fun. And to keep that relationship growing is, means a lot to me. And he took a big chance um, coming from Cowie to, to Honda with me, which was, was cool of him. And I feel like I, I owed him that, um, bringing him to KTM. A question for Justin Barsha. Justin, you've had a ton of success here at Anaheim. Uh, three wins, if I'm not mistaken. But this race is known as the most pressure filled of the year. Do you think there's something behind that where you come in and are able to just focus a little bit more? Everybody else is nervous and you're able to just ride your best where others maybe just have a tough time channeling that? Yeah, you know, it's always been uh, an interesting thing for me here at this race. I've, you know, always done well and enjoyed it. Obviously, last year it didn't go to plan, but. Um, I handle that pressure really well, and I just go out there and do my thing and have fun. I would say this year it feels a little different for me. I don't feel like I'm coming in to where you know I've came in before in the past seasons with a lot of time on the bike, training, and things like that. This year I'm more, uh, I feel like, open and just kind of 
see where I'm at and have fun with it. But that's kind of, in a way, that's how I always come into the first race. Just see where you're at, have fun, and um, do your best. So, yeah, for me, I, I love this place. It's a good vibe. Um, there's obviously a ton of competition here. So I'm uh, stoked to see where I'm at. And it's a long season. Stay healthy, have fun, and go try to win some races. Uh, Kenny, we've got Jorge Prado here, MXGP world champion. Uh, of all the people on the, the stage up there, you're probably the person that could relate uh, to what he's going to go through on Saturday night the closest. What do you expect from Jorge? What do you think Jorge should expect from himself? Three rounds obviously isn't a long time to, to get in the groove, but obviously we know how good he is on a motorcycle. So just given your perspective, your unique perspective, like what do you think he should expect? Yeah, um, we were actually just talking about that. And the situation may be a tiny bit different, um, just as in he's coming into the big boys right away and where I was in a 250 class. And I'm not 100% sure how much Supercross experience in general he has, but it's really tough to <clears throat> excuse me, ex achieve any kind of Supercross experience. Being over in Europe, we just don't have, have it to this level, right? Um, but he's been, I think, on Supercross track for about a month and a half, and that's not a whole lot of time to get, like, ready-ready. But I'm sure it's just, you know, you can be at the practice track all day long and, and, and do laps, and you come to the race, and everything changes, you know. And I think he's aware of that. He's got good people in his corner. And um, I think back then I was, a, I was a lot younger and not thrown in the deep end, but kind of just, like, yeah, just had a different mindset, right, going into these races. And, um, you know, I'm sure he's going to, really enjoy it it's just something really different and i think it's it's something to really take in um not a whole lot of people from europe come over and do this stuff so i think he's gonna have a blast and um, i think it's also very dependent on the track right like sometimes we show up certain years and they got massive whoops right away and, and all of that stuff so um these ones look a little bit more mellow and and you know going to through practice and then starting the night show and going racing is also a whole nother animal so i think there's just a lot of exciting um, moments um, in his future here and his near future and, and getting a feel for it tomorrow and it's like what you said three three races isn't really a whole lot um, probably to get 100% comfortable but it's a start you know and I'm sure if he likes it and everything goes well he'll be back and um, yeah but having said that you know we, we've all seen him race and uh, I've actually seen him ride when he was still in 85 cc's a long time ago like 2012 or whatever it was and you could tell just right away that he had the style and the technique and timing to be able to do this and obviously now he's on a, a whole other caliber so um i wouldn't be surprised if he's doing really well and but i also know how tough it is to come in and do that and he's obviously got the starts on his side and that is a big bonus when it comes to these races especially with a field that is this stacked cool uh josh mosman here mxa again uh i'm super stoked we got a epic list of, uh, of, of guys up here, and every single guy has a storyline, um, but I do want to send this one to Cooper. Uh, Cooper, looking at the list like I just mentioned, I think Ken is the only guy who hasn't switched teams and hasn't got a new bike for the new year. Uh, you have switched teams, but you started that switch early in the last, last year, and kind of an unprecedented uh, switch between KTM to Yamaha mid-season. You got those three super motocross rounds, and you raced in Paris. How are those races going to help you build and kind of get an edge up now moving under the new team for the new season? Yeah, like you said, it was very uh, a little different situation, but uh, it was it was really good to get some races in and also to honestly get my butt beat pretty good. Uh, it was a big wake up call to where we needed to be and what we needed to work on with not only myself but uh, getting me just a little bit more comfortable. So. Yeah, it's been a great offseason so far. We've had great time uh, moving forward, being with the new team, trying stuff, and uh, getting me comfortable. And training's been really good as well. So, yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. Like you said, a lot of good guys, and you know, it's every year it gets deeper and deeper. So it's uh, exciting to be able to race the best guys in the world. And you know, I'm excited. It's uh, I know I can put myself in a good situation for 17 rounds, and uh, I feel like I'm I'm in a much better spot now than than even last year. So excited to get to work. Yeah, Alex Gobert, MotoOnline.com. For Jason Anderson, uh, you have the new 2024 KX450. Uh, do you feel like the, the platform that you have for the new season is going to, you know, sort of allow you to be in the position to once again challenge for the championship? And, and just how has that, uh, you know, the switch been for you? Yeah, I think obviously our uh, 
our new bike and new frame and everything like that, I think it's a, it's a level up. And I think, um, you know, between me and AC, I think we've had really positive feedback with it at the test track. But, um, like, like everyone says, you know, it's a little different at the test track than it is on, on race days. But, um, yeah, I, I feel good and, and, uh, I'm ready just to, uh, see what goes down and, and hopefully, um, for me, I'm closer to the front and we don't have too many problems. And, um, yeah, that's the, that's the goal, but you never know what happens. Michael Lindsay, Vital MX. My question is for Dylan Ferrandis. Dylan, everybody up here in some way, shape or form is considered a full factory rider. Everybody up here probably knew what they were doing much earlier than you did. So hearing those things, a lot of people would think that'd bring a lot of stress, but I've also seen a group of people assemble around you that want to take you racing, that appreciate you. What's your stress levels like coming to this weekend? What's your off season been like for everybody that doesn't know? Um, it's been a very short uh, winter season, obviously, but um, it's been good. Um, like you said, great people around me. Um, we all like to work with each other, so that's a, that's a great point. And um, yeah, I mean, um, I, have, I have the bike I always wanted to ride with, and uh, people I always want to work with. So we see, uh, I feel pretty good. We had uh, the last couple of trainings been very good, and uh, obviously training with the, the Lawrence also helped. And yeah, we had a very good vibe and. Uh, Everything is going uh, to the right direction now, for sure. Um, like you say, we maybe not factory, so uh, we see how it goes. But I think we have some some also great great parts on the bike, and uh, it should be more than enough to to do great. Yeah, I want to follow up, Hunter Lawrence. I know that you and Jet actually go pretty far back with Dylan, and he's been with you at some Honda test track stuff in California and your facility. So just talk about this relationship that you have here. Yeah, it, it uh, yeah, does this on? Yeah, it goes back to yeah when we were in Europe, uh, when we first moved over there, and he was the, the top one of the top dogs there, and we were just like babies, honestly, <laughs> and uh, yeah, he was always super cool to us, and uh, yeah, gave us respect when we were nobody. So it's it's cool to you know carry that relationship. I think it's it's an interesting thing in this sport to have relationships or friendships with other riders and and how it manages you know racing and competing against each other. It's not an easy thing. Uh, and it takes a very level, uh, smart person to be able to separate the two, I think, from on track and off track. Because I think everyone would get along with each other if we all didn't race each other. But, you know, that racing thing creates that friction because we're all so emotionally invested. But, um, oh, it's cool. Michael Antonovich with Swap Moto Live. This one's for Jorge. You've heard quite a few people talk about you now. You're in this position to be at this race, and we know that these next three can be pretty big for what next year could bring. So how does it feel to be sitting on this stage and know what's to come in 24 hours? Yeah, it's uh, first of all, it's nice to, to be here because it's, it's going to be a dream come true to race uh, under the lights. So I'm super happy to be sitting here and almost ready to go right. So no, I... I, it's nice also to hear uh, people talking good about me. Um, I think uh, we did our best to to get with the little time we had after the season to get prepared kind of for for racing. And I'm very excited. Uh, like I said, since I was a little kid, I've been always watching Supercross and watching all these guys that are sitting next to me racing. So hopefully we can, uh, well, let's go racing and, and see how it goes. Uh, get an experience as this will be my first ever Supercross race. So I'm very excited. So uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Just as a follow to that, uh, obviously racing in MXGP, it's going to be a little bit of a change moving to a production-based motorcycle for Supercross. Uh, have you noticed changes there, limitations as far as what can change? You walk through that process is the first time you've had to have that rule. Uh, yeah, but in I think inside the KTM group, it's um, quite basic, let's say. Uh, the race bike, it's already, uh, let's say, the, um, the bike I need to race here, even though it's not the same as my bike in Europe, it's at the same level, let's say. Um, my bike in Europe, it's built to ride uh, motocross. This one, it's, to build, it's built to ride supercross. So I also had different options to test. We did a little bit testing on the frame, different testing suspension, and I feel very comfortable on my bike, I need to say. I, I feel like it's comfortable to ride, and it allows me to go in a, let's say, good pace for me. <laughs> and um, no, I'm very happy. We did uh, good work with the team. And yeah, I just need to thank them because it's not easy. I know when you ride, when you race full time in Europe, and you ask them to come over and and do some racing, they know the risks. I know the risks, but they allow me to come over, and they put everything together so I could also come over and not just ride, but ride 
comfortable. And that's what they did. They make me feel comfortable and I'm glad and I need to thank them to uh, give me this opportunity too. This one's for the cowboy. Mate, uh, you're, a, you're a fan favourite in, uh, in Supercross. Are you excited just to get the chance to be back in, inside the stadiums? You had a few trips on the podium last year. Uh, maybe one of the most exciting races slash crashes slash heartbreaking moments of last year. It seems like you really do great work when you're in the stadium and you've got that opportunity to get on the mic in front of the crowd. Um, you're excited for this year, obviously, and excited to hit any stadiums in particular just with the fan love that you seem to get in certain stadiums. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm obviously excited about this year. Uh, I feel, you know, I think I feel better this year than I have in any 450 year that I've had so far. So it's, uh, it's exciting for that part. And then, yeah, I think, um, I mean, I didn't get to race Nashville last year and, uh, I really, really wanted to, cause I had something special for them, but, uh, maybe this year. And then, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm 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 just ready for this uh this whole season. We we've, we've got some really cool new venues on the map and uh and I'm ready to get out there and uh to show them what I got, but um yeah, I'm I'm really excited just for the season in general. Um I'm really excited to race these guys and uh I'm I'm excited for tomorrow. Which uh which frame did you go with too, by the way? <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, to be honest, I'm not sure. I don't even know what tires I'm on, brother. <laughs> I kind of love that, though. <laughs> uh, question for Chase. Chase, do you feel as fast on the KTM as you did last year on the Honda? And with Jed and Hunter coming in, are you expecting the level to go even higher than it was next year, last season? <laughs> yeah, for me, I don't ever feel like speed is a problem. Um, and on this bike, I, I, like I said, I feel very comfortable. And like I said, I, I, I know how to go fast. But I expect the, the levels to rise this year just with how many good guys there are. And it just keeps getting deeper and deeper every year. I've been in this class. This would be my, I think, fourth year already, which is kind of crazy for me. I feel like I just started. And uh, yeah, I expect the levels to rise. And that's what I've kind of prepared for. Mitch Kendra from Racer X. Uh, this is for Christian Craig. Obviously, you're a 250 West champion. You're a experienced vet. Uh, you've been racing, obviously, a long time. Just talk about, do you kind of feel like an underdog? You know, you're sitting in the back there, kind of listening to everybody. Do you kind of feel like you have uh, pressure to prove yourself this year and kind of talk about your mentality heading into the season? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm sitting back here. I don't know if anybody sees me, but you can ask me some questions. Yeah. But, uh, no, it's fine. I mean, there, yeah, there's 15 guys up here that uh, at any given time can win the race. So, um, yeah, uh, I feel good. It was a good off season. I'm excited. Um, another year with the team, I'm more comfortable, comfortable on the bike, uh, healthy. And, uh, yeah, I love that. I love that underdog story though. Um, it seems to be kind of fitting for me. So we'll, uh, yeah, I'll let the results, we'll let the results show. Uh, Eli, first of all, your posture is immaculate when you do these things. So it's just, I just wanted to commend you on that. Uh, so I think it's probably safe to say that, that Jet and Chase, from where we're sitting now might be, I guess, the two biggest threats um, for you and your run at the title. Are they different threats, though? Like, is Chase a threat in a different way? Do they have different strengths? Like, how would you break down um, those two as individual athletes, I guess, going against you to try and win this title? It's, uh, gosh, that's a good question. It's, it's hard to say. I mean... I feel like Chase, he has experience, but then you have Jet, who just went perfect in the motocross season. So it's like experience didn't matter. So I'm treating these guys the same way, and they're and they're both just really good on a dirt bike. And and yeah, they're two heavy hitters. And do you have any, uh, I guess, just like extra appreciation for this season that it may be your last Supercross season, like? Are you going to be taking extra effort to really take everything in? Um, because as a racer, there's a finite timeline on your career. Does that play into your mind at all? <clears throat> yeah, but I've also had that mindset like the past couple of years um, when I made the switch to, uh, you know, Monster Energy Star Racing, Yamaha, I, I was kind of like at a, on a yearly timeline, you know, for each season. So, and that's how I've been, uh, you know, have been playing that game. Um, so since then, and, and as you get older, yeah, you, you enjoy those, those moments more and the racing more and more. And 
just like you fall more in love with it. But yes, we are on a finite timeline and just don't know it yet. Well, uh, thanks for coming back, mate. All the fans really appreciate it. Thanks. Lurch with uh, Race Day Live, uh, Jorge Prado. Uh, you're lining up against some of the most talented riders the sports have ev has ever seen. Are you more excited to race American Supercross or to possibly be lining up at A1 tomorrow night? I think uh, a bit of everything, right? I, I normally don't race these guys, so this is also cool for me to race different riders. And at the same time, I will race for the first time Supercross, so I think it will be a great experience. Um, and I don't have much to say. I'm just super excited uh, to see how everything goes to the moment. I'm enjoying it a lot, this experience. So we'll see how all things go on track. Um, I'm a bit nervous. I just want to get on my bike and spin some laps uh, around the track. Jamie with Vital MX. Jorge, I want to stick with you. Uh, just in the few months you've been in Supercross, practicing Supercross, how much do you feel you've progressed? And give me a rating on how much you love Supercross whoops. <laughs> Um, I mean, progression, it's obvious when you ride more, you progress. It's not that difficult when you start from zero, right? So uh, obviously there was some progression. I had to go a couple of times back to Europe. So from the first time I was in the US, I kind of had to go twice or three times back. So I miss a little bit my progression there. But, um, but yeah, I think I had enough time to be, let's say, to do everything, at least the basic stuff on track, uh, and to feel comfortable doing it. Uh, about the whoops, it just depends which kind of whoops. <laughs> so <laughs> if they are small or they are big, so and if they are fresh or not. So I don't know. I just, every time I go to the track, I just try to survive through them. And I try to learn, and, and that's it. But when it comes to main event, I need to sweat a lot every time before <laughs> the whoops, because I know <laughs> I need to hold on to the bike. So. Uh, but no, I, I enjoy it. I enjoy it, and that's the, the, the nicest thing of it. I like to suffer, too. <laughs> that's cool. Uh, Josh, MXA again. Uh, building off of kind of what Jay said, Eli, for you, um, after you got injured last year, or yeah, I guess last year now, um, a lot of people questioned, was that the last time we saw Eli Tomac race? And I kind of made the comment that maybe this injury would extend your career, time off, that was forced time off, forced to stay home, uh, not by choice. Does that extend your career and kind of re-motivate you to keep going longer? And then also, where's your mind at right now as far as the rest of the SMX uh, year goes on? Is it a Supercross only mind right now, or are you thinking further down the road? Well, yeah, at first it's just like, yeah, I mean, like, I'm probably done, but uh, just because not knowing, you know, what that injury is, or knowing how bad it can be to recover from. But uh, at the same time, once I decided to go racing again, uh, my neck stopped hurting, my back stopped hurting, so I'm like, I'm fresh, I'm ready to go again. And it may have extended, you know, uh, you know, a season or so. But uh, I just, I just am uh, taking it, you know, by this season right now. And, and currently, yeah, I'm only signed up for Supercross. Dan Beaver. It's come to my attention that uh, the three long-haired guys are all together on the back row. So can you briefly talk, and since it's the last question, uh, and I'm asking all three of you, about the importance of personality in the sport, starting with Justin? Yeah, you need, a, you need some good personality in the sport. And I think you look up here, and all of us have different personalities, different vibes. Um, it's, it's awesome. It makes the sport exciting. Um, obviously, when we put on those helmets, people can't always see those personalities. So when we're doing stuff like this, it's cool to see the different, you know, guys and how we act. And, and you know, like AP, obviously, he's, you know, awesome. He's a good friend of mine. And, you know, he's so much fun to be around. So there's a lot of different personalities that make this sport exciting. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think it's, uh, it's important to to have a good personality and then it's also important in this sport to be a little bit different and uh kind of break out of your comfort zone a little bit and um i think the fans really really resonate with that and if you are different they you know they they look to that different guy and and you know it it makes you i don't know it doesn't make you popular but it makes you different than everybody else so um <laughs> But, uh, yeah, it's, it's good to have a good personality, and, and um, yeah, I don't know. I, I like it. 
That's AP for you. <laughs> um, no, it's obviously cool to have a different personality, like these guys said. You know, the um, only, only reason I grew my hair out because I was always a big St. Louis Rams fan from Steven Jackson, so I always thought dreads, dreads were really cool. So the downfall of it is uh, when it gets all muddy and dirty and stuff like that, you're sitting in the shower for about two hours. So, But, I mean, it's part of it. Um, again, personality is always key. People call me the predator or whatever they want to call me, but um, <clears throat> we're we all have personalities up here, you know. It's uh, that's what you know makes this game more fun. You know, it's not just always about racing motorcycles. You know, it's what you know Instagram and you know social media is for. See what we all do on their you know off season and stuff like that. Like Kenny loves to surf, Chase likes to surf. You know, we all have our own cool little personalities that we like to do. And um, again, it's it's I think that's what makes our fan favorites. And I've also I've I've also wanted to uh, be like Joe Dirt when I grew up. So that's why I got the mullet. Dream come true, you did it. Congratulations, yeah, aim man. high. Uh, that's it for our athletes. Round of applause for them. Thank you for the time. We'll have a little media one-on-one -on -one time over there. I know everybody wants some one-on-one -on -one time. We'll get as much as we can in because we do have riding sessions starting at 1 o'clock. We'll have 250 riders on the track at 1 o'clock, and then we'll have our 450 riders on the track. And I also want to remind everyone the Lawrence brothers are hosting their own media day at their new VIP zone. Go there at 315. That'll be after the riding, so you won't miss any of the riding. And go to the Lawrence Brothers uh, VIP area at 315 for a little media tour. Maybe they'll flip some burgers and cook some hot dogs for you. Uh, for those watching on the live stream, just a couple of reminders. Everything starts race day live tomorrow on Peacock starting at 2.30 Eastern time. And our pre-race show on Peacock and the SMX video pass at 7.30 Eastern. And the live broadcast with the racing starts on USA Network, Peacock, and the SMX video pass at 8 o'clock Eastern. Yes, we have adjusted start times of our Western races to align with 8 p.m. Eastern. So it's a little bit easier for the folks on the other half of the country to stay up late enough to watch the races. Stream live on Peacock, CNBC at 1 Eastern Monday, and NBC will also have the race re-aired Sunday at noon. So if you're watching on our live stream right now, those are all the different ways that you get to watch our opener. For Jason Thomas, I'm Jason Wygant. Thanks for joining us. Thanks to the athletes and teams. It's going to be an awesome 2024.